We all know the West Indies has a storied history of producing some of the most fearsome and devastating fast bowlers the cricketing world has ever seen. And these athletes that we're about to discuss possessed raw pace, unwavering determination, and an unyielding spirit that made them the legends of the game. Hey there, Kicker Lovers. Welcome back to another episode here on the Reverse Group channel. And today we have a thrilling episode lined up for you as we delve into the heart-pounding world of cricket. And today in this episode, we pay tribute to the powerhouse of pace, the giants of fast bowling, the top 10 West Indies fast bowlers of all time. Again, I have my buddy Mark joining me today. We've compiled this list of top 10 West Indian bowlers, which wasn't easy. You know, I want to welcome Mark on board. Mark, how are you doing, brother? Thank you for joining me. Are you ready to do this top 10 Wendy's fast bowlers of all time? Yo. Right, Nabil. Thanks for having me back on the Reverse Group. We're here again, once again, to review some West Indies cricket histories. And now we're going to top 10 fast bowling. It's very hard since West Indies, West Indies has a legacy of producing great fast bowlers over the years. This, we uh, go through, we're going to go through by skill sets. Mark mentioned it's, you know, based on skill. We all know the West Indies has a storied history of producing some of the most fearsome and devastating fast bowlers the cricketing world has ever seen. And these athletes, that we're about to discuss, you know, they possessed raw pace, unwavering determination, and an unyielding spirit that made them the legends of the game. So without further ado, Mark, I want to start off with number 10. Do you want to let the viewers know what our, num what our pick number 10 is? Get right into this video. Uh, our number 10 is Winston Benjamin from Antigua. Fast bowler, very beautiful rhythmic action, nice approach to the crease. He was very slippery, very deceptive in pace. If you watch him bowl, you wouldn't know he was bowling that quick unless you face him. He, he had a very good uh, slow ball, cut the ball, swing the ball. The, the full package. Never played, only played in 21 test matches. Correa cut short. I mean, I'm not sure for what reason or the other. We would love to see him play at least 50 test matches. Then we could elaborate more performance on his contribution to West Indies cricket. I mean, I think he obviously quick as a lot of the other West Indians, but what in particular made him different, Mark, to like the other fast bowlers of that time? Besides just being quick, was there anything else about Winston Benjamin the viewers don't know that you would like to tell them about Winston Benjamin? Yes, beautiful approach. Nice, smooth, rhythmic bowling action. Similar to Jerome Taylor. He, he was a no-nonsense ca character, personality, but he had the skills, you know. He could generate extreme pace on dead wickets and swing the ball. He played for Leicestershire and English Conference Championships as, as well. Period of time. He only played 21 test matches for West Indies, but swung the ball, the bouncer. It was a full package in the wrong time, really. Corey was cut short. I'm not sure, really, really sure for what reason or the other. Very good bowler, you know, deceptive, quick, good outswing, good slower ball. The full package, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think he, he you know, debuted in 1986 and, you know, played test and international cricket. Both was, again, known for his aggressive approach, as you mentioned, Mark. And was it was a challenging period a bit, right, when he was part of that team. So some things you know obviously have been great for for west indian cricket but this guy couldn't obviously reach to the heights that some of the other guys that we're going to discuss did but number 10 our number 10 winston benjamin let us know what you guys think in the comments you know if you agree with our number 10 guys you know we're going to go through this list so you keep on dropping your thoughts in the comments and let us know what you guys think of the picks we're going to go to our number nine on the list so number nine we have so jerome taylor uh, number nine is our guy so mark some things about jerome taylor or why we added him on this list what makes him one of the top West Indian bowlers of all time. Jerome Taylor was, was a slippery bowler. Very accurate, beautiful action, nice approach to the crease, and surprisingly explosive delivery, nice high pace. Swung the ball. You know, he was a skillful bowler. He always out taught batsmen. Ball from wide of the crease, ball from behind of the crease, 23 yards. He just had that about him. He has some really nice moments of brilliance for West Indies. I remember his career best, 6 for 47. Ball very well, beautifully. Remember a couple spells again against England. Sabina Pan and some dead pitches. He generated high amount of pace and was able to ball quickly and beat the batsman for sheer pace. He's a slimly bare man, small in, in an stature. So if you see him just want walking around the field, you wouldn't really believe that that's a, that's Jerome Taylor, the fast bowler. Very skillful bowler. I started his career at 17 or 18 for Jamaica. Always one of my West Indies favorites. What I loved about Jerome Taylor, right, that he brought different types of variations, right? He had pace, he had bounce, and he had the ability to swing the ball, which made him a nightmare watching him. And he was quick, as you said. When he has a good rhythm, 
he really generated beautiful and high pace. And his action, a very beautiful action, similar to Winston Benjamin, very beautiful action. He had a few injuries, but because he was a small man, he did live up to the expectation. I would have really loved to see him play a little bit longer too, but politics in West Indies cricket really cut short his career. Absolutely. And he had mental toughness as well. So he was always up for the challenge against the best in the world. Always loved about, you know, Jerome Taylor, that ability for him to rise up. So that was our number nine. Mark, do you want to let viewers know our number eight? Ian Bishop, really hostile fast bowler. If it wasn't for his back injury, could have come out to be one of West Indies all-time great. Very fast bowler. Aggressive. Bowler, nice, beautiful outswinger. Nice, beautiful action. If it wasn't for his injury, he would have a really long career because he was the most promising around 1988-89. Even Malcolm Marshall spoke about Ian Bishop as one of the most promising West Indies fast bowlers. But the thing with him, he had good pace, always generate good pace. A good bouncer, never really scared to dig it in. Good outswing, always in the business area. A beautiful bowler, really put fear, fear in a lot of um, English batsmen and batsmen he played in test cricket during his short career. I mean, obviously, his, you know, he had, again, one of those those fearsome fast bowlers who had pace and bounce. He also had the height and natural attributes that allowed him to, as I mentioned, extract that extra bounce, right? With that beautiful action. You know, definitely one of the more consistent and always on the game type of a bowler who can't kind of get away with not a lot of bad balls you'll get from him. He'll always just be there and thereabouts, man, challenging you with that accuracy. And another thing that he had was his work ethic. His skills and, and everything that he worked on obviously came to him by just working hard on his game and always having that attitude of, you know, always improving and then obviously over time his cricket knowledge and everything you know he became into a really great commentator what, you know anything else like, about uh, in bishop yeah. you want to add here mark yes what i like about ian bishop he never really was afraid to dig it in that bouncer remember he yeah. bowled in a, a bouncer to justin langer his first ball in test test cricket Lang was receiving his first delivery in test cricket bang on the helmet the yeah. next ball was another bouncer read at, at his head I remember him seeing that ball in a spell again 1990 against England alongside Courtney Walsh. Uh, Robin Smith was um, offering some great resistance. Tony Gregg was in the commentator boat. And when Bishop started running and, and, and ball, was saying, or oh, he took back, he was saying Bishop wasn't that quick. Then he said, I take back everything about this bloke. This bloke is extremely, yeah. but they didn't have a, a speed gun at the time of that match. But he said, you hear from Tony Gregg, world-class commentator, that Bishop was extremely quick. And he bowled a couple of bouncers at Robin Smith. He was just in inches away. Even if he was a good accurate bowler, he had that fear factor in him. It was always exciting watching Ian Bishop. You know, he would always bring a smile on my face. He really left some good performances in, in the test arena for West Indies. Absolutely. In the short time that he played, right, he made a big impact on, on the game of cricket for the West Indies and became a role model for a lot of West Indian fast bowlers that followed. So definitely one of the greats of the game in West Indian fast bowling. And now on to number seven, Mark. I think number seven we had is Courtney Walsh. Yes, Courtney Walsh. What made him so great, man? Well, Courtney Walsh, when he started, he had very good pace. As he played, more and more he played, he got a little bit slower, but he became a, what you call a walk horse. You know, with ball for very long spells, one end tight, very economical bowling, while West Indies, the other bowler, attacked from the, the other end. But Walsh was always a good wicket taker. He's a smart bowler as well, a smooth operator, out take, out taught the batsman. The main thing with Walsh, he had very good variation. To the bowler, slower ball, he had a, a nice in swinger. Again, he had a, a good bouncer and he had an out swinger as well, you know, and he could really up the ante when he really needed to. Put the Walsh bowling sometimes in tandem, he used to bowl with Cod. The Ambrose. So Ambrose would attack from one end and Walsh would just keep it tight from, from the other end. But I, I really love Courtney Walsh. 519 test wickets, best of 7 for 37, average of 24.44, which is very good. Test match best of 13 for 55. I think that was in New Zealand. Great servant to West Indies cricket. Big time, man. I think his biggest achievement for West Indies, right, is, is their leading test wicket taker, as you mentioned. 519 test wickets, man. is is no joke, you know, for a fast bowler and being able to last that long with the stamina and the durability and as you said being a workhorse for the West Indian cricket over the years and being such a great servant it's just mind-boggling man how bodies can last mention the first three fast bowlers and Winston Benjamin who didn't play for long Ian Bishop who didn't play for long Jerome Taylor because of their fast bowling injury impact that gets put on the body this guy here he was found a way to be on cruise control for years on end just smashed records after records with the ball in test cricket always say for me 
Courtney Walsh, I'm going to ask him if he's still a tired man. Because to bowl so many overs, always, you know, put up his hand for West Indies. He even said as, as, the, as the captain down in Australia in his last Test Series 2001, bowled tirelessly. You, you have to say hats off to him. It's not easy on the body. I, I all say he just like Jimmy Anderson. These guys yeah. don't come along too often. He hardly had injuries in his career. Or if he had injuries, he tied it well. Always a very dependable bowler for West Indies. So always expect him to produce. Off the field, a nice man. He loved to play dominoes. Very funny guy as well. Courtney Walsh, one of the great servants of West Indies cricket. Hats off to him. Guys, if you guys know any other facts or, you know, details about any of these, you know, feel free to drop them in the comments. Something we may have missed or if you guys, again, think where some of these players may fit in your ranking. So let us know in the comments what you guys think. But now on to number six, Mark. Who's your, who's your number six? Joel Ghana. I call him the master of accuracy. A big, tall, right. giant top bowler. I saw him live. I saw him live bowl and I was always wondering, geez, this man must be so difficult to play because he was 6'7 he came from so high up so at least when he delivering he is at least 7 feet in the air towards you and yeah. he, he never he had the ball bad deliveries and he, he wasn't that express or didn't look that express but he was what you call a stiff what you call a stiff bowler in the Caribbean we call him an iron ball bowler always bowling you and surprising you, you as well with, with his pace but the main thing is it's that Yorker I see him destroy so many batsmen with that Yorker during his playing days and he had a very good outswinger. He was a Lloyd Gutcher man. Anytime Clive Lloyd need to get a breakthrough or keep things tight, he would turn to Joel Garner. And Joel Garner would always deliver. You know, the big ball, he starts with that bending sort of run up. And then as he come up, he, he, he extends his body. And, you know, just a beautiful motion. They don't make them like, they, like this anymore. Very accurate. Best ball in the test cricket, 6 for 56. Best in the match was 9 for 108. He picked up 259 test cricket. At an average of 20.97 i think that's the, i think that's the best one of the best bowling averages for west indies fast bowler in the history of west indies cricket. One, another one of those guys who in 1979 played a major role in win over australia that as you mentioned the six for 56 skipper always turned to him when when he needed it start to contain he always had that late swing you know what we shared video recently on our socials of, of big bird bowling and to alan border alan border gets this in dipper from him he has no idea you know how late that ball swung and how deceptive the pace was because he was so smooth through the crease that push off through the crease he was so smooth the high arm action man as you said so beautiful they don't make make him like that anymore and wow just watching some of the old videos that you even share on your page mark joel garner and other fast bowlers is just simply amazing so guys if you want to definitely check out older historian videos of marks that he posts on his facebook page You'll find a ton of old videos of all these fast bowlers that we're discussing so feel free to go and check it out i'll link his page in the description and you guys can check out a lot of these older videos that mark posts this will be very surprised if you haven't seen a guy like joel garner bowl you know he's our number six on the list number five mark we went with curtly ambrose so what made curtly ambrose so great man i mean again he's one of the greats of west indian cricket he was always on point and on the game what made ambrose so special was his ability to always pick up early wickets and bowl long spells and never really give the batsman too many bad deliveries. Very accurate. He had all the variations. And as a tall man, back in the early 80s, 88, 89, he had Debbie Yorker, similar to Joel Garner. Crush it to with that Yorker. Always in the business era. Make the batsman play. Yeah, very tall and very didn't spoke too much as a bowler. Just look at the glare at the batsman. Always at, at the batsman, making them play. Had a good bouncer. He never really bowled over over bowl the short ball too much. He tends to be just about that length, that awkward length. You call it a short of a good length delivery. You can't drive. You, you can't really cut. You you just have to really play from the crease. I saw some, I saw some devastating spell by Courtney Ambrose. It was just amazing. And you wonder how, how a man could produce so many brilliant spell over a long career that seven for one in australia went once in in the quick at the queen's park over one of the greatest of all times to me in west indies cricket uh, 405 test wickets best of eight for 45 best of 11 for 84 in a match average of 20.99 ambrose Ooh. and Dre just about par ghana 20.97 ambrose 20.99 two of the best average for fast bowlers in west indies in the history of west indies cricket ambrose was deadly you know like he was he was again one of those guys that couldn't just let up even a single delivery because he 
He was always on you. You had to really focus on every delivery. And as you said, he had so many great match-winning performances. At 7 for 25 against Australia in 1993, you know, at the WACA. The most celebrated performance. In addition to, you know, that 8 for 45 against England in 1990, you know, Ambrose demolished England and, and helped secure the famous West Indies win. You know, and many other line, lining it up. So he was one of those guys that West Indian cricket really, really relied on through his time. And him in partnering with Courtney Walsh, right? That was some deadly combo because world cricket at that time had a combination of these bowlers. You know, we saw Wasim and Wakar in the late 80s and the 90s. We had, you know, Ambrose and and Walsh and a couple other guys from other teams. That era of fast bowling, man, that these guys played in, especially Ambrose and Walsh, they were some special times because the player quality was something else too in those days. Yes. And those guys really put in the, you know, had a very good work ethic. And both Walsh and Ambrose played county cricket for a long period of time. So that just tell you the wear and tear and the body as well. But when they played for West Indies, they always deliver. But we had different fast bowlers featuring with these guys, King, Nixon, McLean, Franklin, Rose, but nobody still, they weren't able to still produce as Walsh and Ambrose. So, so that's really set those guys apart from the others. And bowlers basically on the fringe. They get a lot of opportunity to play, to, to take over the attack to, and still couldn't do it. So we had to rely on Ambrose and Walsh for so long. So that was our number five, guys. Curly Ambrose, the legend. Number four, Mark, who, we, who, who did we go with on number four? Michael Holden, whispering death. If you, if you want a, a youngster to copy a bowling action, you tell them to look at Michael Holden. So rhythmic, nice, long run up smooth to the crease they, they call him whispering death because of his pace his extreme pace once you see he was in good rhythm he was deadly you know had a, a really quick bouncer good bouncer i was lucky to see him bowl 1981 in st vincent and the grenadines versus england there was a match west indies versus england west indies score 127 england score 125 but the last over of the match clive lloyd gave it to michael holden and he was bowling to chris old and i tell you up to this day, I still didn't see those two deliveries. The last delivery, the second delivery, clean ball, Chris Hall. So West Indies won that match by two runs. So one of the most excited match I ever saw in my life, live holding bowling. So also saw him playing for Jamaica as well. Very good bowler. The thing with holding, holding ball quickly all the time. Some bowlers would generate pace and some bowlers would bowl. Even when he came off a short run, five or six paces, he was just as quick. 14 wickets yeah. against England. You know, I watched that so many times over and over. 1976 at the over. It was remarkable. We call him the Rolls Royce of fast bowling. Rolls Royce of fast bowling, whispering, silent death. He had so many deadly names, man, because this dude was fearsome fast bowler and batters at that time, you know, that eight for 92 by far, you know, arguably the most legendary spell in history of West, West Indian cricket England, against England. Yeah, if we, if we were to compare this spell to the Shamar Joseph spell, Mark, seven for against Australia, which one would you rank higher? Michael Holding still, correct? Yes, I tend to go with, with Michael Holding because those days at West Indies was a dominating team, but we had we had the bowlers to back up Holding. I think we had Daniel Roberts and Van Ball Holder is the sheer pace and a dead pitch at the oval that really makes that bowling stands out. Everybody still talk about 14 wickets at the oval by Michael Holding. No one really come close to it because it was a dead pitch. The England had a formidable team, good batsmen back in those days, but it was the, the, the spell and a, and a dead pitch. Even Holding bowled a few bounces, but no other bowler was really able to extract the amount of pace and venom from that pitch, and Holding did. That's why he was so loved by the English English supporters over a long period of time as well. You know, West Indies had a good support in England, but every way Holding went, he was well respected as well. As well, 249 test wickets, best of 8 for 92, best of 14 for 149 in the match, average of 23.68, which is very good for a genuine fast bowler. Yeah, he was just amazing and definitely comes in as our number four on the list. So number three, we've gone with Colin Croft. See, for his dominating presence with pace and bounce, a fearsome reputation and a key figure in West Indies fast bowling legacy. Mark, what made Colin Croft so good? I would say Colin Croft, my favorite West Indies fast bowler of all time. What different about Croft was his ability to swing the ball and bowl from different angles. You know, he had a, you call it like a windmill, a cartwheel kind of action. Now, for, let's say like a funny action, not the textbook action. But what happened, he always gave 150%. It doesn't matter whether the pitch was quick or the pitch was dead. He always running, running into the batsman. Wicked out swinger. You know, he used to bowl from around the wicket, wide of the crease, still swing the ball into the batsman. No one really had that, that kind of skill back in those days. Then he would go wide of the crease, 
and swing the ball away from the bats. That's what some skills call in Croft. All of, all of West Indies fast bowlers, Croft loved to dig it in. He would bowl four or five bounces in an over. You know, even the umpire warned him, he would still run and bowl. It was very hostile. When he made his debut against Pakistan in 1977, he came onto the scene with a bat. He got eight for 29 against Pakistan, announced his uh, entrance into test cricket. He was always a serious guy. Never really smile a lot. Just tear the batsman, walk up to the batsman. Always at the batsman. Sometimes you see him roll up his bowling long Steve you see he was roll up his long Steve shot and he would keep coming I remember a couple great spells in Australia 1980 Crawford just keep running in and bowling through Greg Chapo and Bruce Laird and Bird and all those guys just keep going away with high pace as well and accurate yeah. you know he wasn't really afraid to pitch up the ball because his strength was really swing for all the West Indies yeah. bowlers he, he would dig in a, a few short ones his career was cut short by a back injury you know so he only played 27 test matches for West Indies a best of 8 for 29 he had a 125 yeah. wickets a best in the match 9 for 95 and again a great average of 23.30 top class quality fast bowler in addition to his bowling right he was known to be super athletic and a good fielder in the field always giving his 100 percent you know he was part of that quadrant of fast bowlers right so imagine facing a michael holding and then a joel garner and then an andy robert and then comes colin croft that attack in the 70s was just something huh mark yes they all give you something different high pace different. high quality pace, but they just came at you different as i say croft used to use angle while the crease close to the stump you know around the wicket for all of west indies fast bowler back in those days from those uh, four fast bowlers he had the most variation colin croft definitely one of the great comes in at number three guys because of the skill set that he brought now on to our number two our number two mark who is it malcolm marshall as everyone would say is the greatest fast bowler of all time malcolm marshall you know a master of, of all the, the skill sets swing the ball seam the ball hostile bumps ball close to the stump you know always out taught the batsman you know marshall the thing with marshall he would he would before every series he would get tapes of all the batsmen he's going to come up against the opposition batsmen and look and come up with a plan and how he was going to dismiss them. Dismiss them exactly as how he planned. You know, so hats off to him. He used to do his research. Any test series, he would send for tapes and, and, and look at all the top batsmen, find a way how to get them out. Very good bowler. I saw him, I was lucky to saw him play in St. Vincent for Barbados versus Winnow Islands. Boston started to run up from this and beautiful action. The unique thing with all these West Indies fast bowlers, they had different action. Marshall was smooth, different, but smooth. Quick arm delivery. You know, he was a joy to watch. But even when he was injured, one time he bowled with a broken hand. He was injured in England and got 7 for 22, his career best. 11 for 89 in that match. His average is 20.94. Again, back up there with the top of the, the fast ball in the Caribbean. Best, as I said, best of 7 for 22. But overall, 376 test wickets. You know, as we all know, he passed away. Gone too soon, I would say. You know, they, I always say the good die young. That's the case in Malcolm Mann. So well respected everywhere he goes. Ultimate professional in Hampshire, in Natal, in South Africa, you know, anywhere he played for, you know, he always very best. The good thing about Malcolm Marshall, he always passes skills along, always would talk to opposition, talk to a youngster, any bowler, to try and improve them. Taught even Mixon McLean, try his best to teach Mixon McLean as well from St. Vincent Tannic when it means. That was one of the good things about Malcolm Marshall. Always share his knowledge and always try to help other cricketers to improve. And he, he, as you said, he had a big influence on, you know, the West Indian fast bowlers that came after his time and you know rest in peace to the great man he also brought big time like adaptability right as you mentioned one of his skill sets since he had the mindset of being able to you know kind of bowl all these different variations and seam and swing and out think the batsman clever to understand what the pitch was what the requirement was and then he adapted accordingly based on what he needed to do to get the batsman out so his number one quality you know why he's regarded as, as one of the best or arguably the best is that adaptability he can read the conditions so fast and then apply his skill sets so quickly to get thing the bats on which was unseen for those days yes nowadays most of the team has an analyst so the analyst will do that job so but before back in Marshall yeah. time he did the job his, himself as an analyst because he used to look at all the, the top batsmen or the batsmen in the teams and opposition he was going to play and try to sort out a way or figure out how he's going to bowl if he's going to bowl particular batsman short or if he's just going to like for example he always used to trap Mike Gatton on the crease LBW and he said he did his research and saw how Mike Gatton is out all the time so that was his method of getting uh, Mike Gatton out and he did get Mike Gatton out and numerous of times 
LBW trapped in the crease, sometimes shouldering arms and bowling. His thought process was always like, like a professor, you know, he's trying to think, come up with a, a, a way the batsman out. You know, Sean Paul of South Africa spoke highly of Malcolm Marshall as well, basically saying that Marshall taught him all his skills and Pollock went on to be one of South Africa greats. Hats off to Malcolm Marshall. Man, absolutely. And he comes in as number two guys on our list. Um, you know, again, arguably the great. If you guys agree with us on this so far, let us know. What do you guys think of the list? We're going to announce our number one now, Mark. Who are we going with our number one, man? Andy Roberts is number one fast bowler. And the reason why we created come up with Andy Roberts is because he was the leader of the attack from the early 70s, right? With West Indies. He was the one who really taught most of the fast bowlers to bowl in partnership with. He was the one really teach them a lot of skills about fast bowling. And a lot of the other fast bowlers who played am among him would tell you that Andy Roberts was the one who got a lot of knowledge from. So that's why I went with Andy Roberts as the number one. You know, I know Marshall as the best, yes, with all the skill set, but you have to learn from somebody. And I don't really think it's fair that you learn from the teacher. You put the student at number one and put the, the, the teacher at number two. So that's the reason why, you know, I stick with Andy Roberts at number one. Again, as always, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. You know, guys, check out his, his page. I'll link it again in the description. Don't forget to go ahead and follow us there as well. So, guys, thank you again. Mark, Mark Audain, and Nabil Khan from The Reverse Coup signing off. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks again.